Finally, it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, and I'm back with this review that you're about to see. Stick with me to the end. I'll tell you what my gut feeling is on what this car will sell for. 61 Lincoln Continental Sedan. Now, I'm not going to go through my normal presentation because I've kind of got to a point where many of the viewers are probably accustomed to seeing some of that. And I will cover those, you know, probably in the future um, on some cars. But on this one, I want to do a quicker review if I can. And uh, I want to also reinforce that I did a review on the 65 sedan. Uh, a lot of folks kind of chimed in and said, yeah, this would be a good ratty car, if you will, in terms of kind of just keeping it more of a patina Lincoln, kind of a ratty Lincoln, if you will. That is a term that we sometimes use. But the ironic thing that I wanted to show you is there's two days left here, $3,000 on it. There are five days left, and this one's already surpassed, so we'll talk about potentially why uh, on this 61. Of course, the 61 has that very distinctive front end. Um, the, the Thunderbird design was liked so much that it was basically chosen for the 61, kind of the last-ditch effort to say, hey, the sales were low. Uh, we're going to do this 61 Lincoln. We're going to see how it goes, and then from there, it kind of – uh, saved the brand, so to speak. But again, this is going to be a little bit more high level. Uh, this car is uh, in Florida, you can see here, and uh, it has a bunch of the normal information. The Continental was acquired, I always like to look at this, in 2022. It's offered with no reserve, so that's a key thing. We can see right off the bat from this front three-quarter shot, it has the 64 uh, and up uh, wheel covers, aka hubcaps. And the, the, the piece of that, um, to keep in mind is, you know, for someone that's looking for like an all kind of original Lincoln, this one's not going to be for you. Uh, th this, uh, this car, although, you know, I like when they'll put the 15 inch wheels on these earlier year Lincolns, like the 61, um, that's not technically what, uh, what came on it. So just to kind of point that out, many of you probably have already noticed that not a big deal. Again, instead of a 14 inch wheel, you got a 15 Good thing is you can actually find more tires typically with the 15 inch. Uh, it was finished originally in turquoise mist. You're going to see here, again, this is kind of keeping it high level. The interior has been redone. Now it's more of a custom interior. Of course, this doesn't look anything like the factory. Uh, you can see here because it was a turquoise mist car, you've got some accent colors that show the original colors and we can kind of see with the steering wheel and 61 only where the AC um, vents here are hidden. There is this extra, sometimes people refer to it as an extra hidden vent, vent, uh, if you will. Uh, when I did the review of one of Chris Dunn's cars, I forgot to pull this all the way down to show that vent, but you can clearly see the hints of the original paint kind of uh, speaking through, if you will. Odometer shows 90,000 miles, give or take. We can see here it's got a three port, which is good. It has a newer air conditioned compressor, uh, which this company either is still in Tampa Bay or they used to be. I don't know if they're still around. Uh, which we'll see a sticker on there. They used to do installs as well. Uh, now they just sell the parts themselves. Uh, we can see underneath here, you know, a little bit of kind of surface rust in some spots, a little crusty, if you will. The earlier year Lincolns, as I have pointed out, when you open the door, this is going to be down where your foot was at, kind of the foot well over by where the parking brake is. These earlier year Lincolns had this uh, door plate, if you will, uh, on more of the door jam. Uh, versus on the door itself. We could see here again, Bring a Trailer does a fantastic job breaking this information down. Being that this was a 61, and we can see here, it was the 21,231st uh, Lincoln built in that, um, with that sequential unit number. And what that means is, of course, uh, this one was built uh, June 12th. So that would have been towards the, the end of that 61 production run, right? So this one wouldn't have been built in 1960 because it was June 12th. And that would have been, you know, at the tail end of that potential run right there. Now, uh, I've always reinforced this. This is a key thing. You want to have videos. They do have a few videos of the car running and I just kind of turned down the volume because, you know, uh, sometimes it'll, it'll pick up, uh, different, uh, things for copyright or whatnot. So, um, you can see here again, it's running, 
there's a few things that obviously aren't correct. You know, this is not the correct wing nut, if you will. You know, these are chrome. I mean, there, there are certainly some things like if you were to buy this car and you wanted to put it back to original, it's going to it's gonna need a good bit. Not uh, harping on this, so to speak, at all, but it's just kind of stating the facts. Now, uh, so again, there are a couple of uh, videos there. Now, really where I want to pay my attention is, you know, this car – although the 65 I did recently is kind of has that ratty feel, that rattiness to it. This car does as well. But I think here's the thing. What's appealing to people here is it's a black Lincoln. People love these black Lincolns. The challenge is though, the other 65 kind of shows us a little bit more. We, we get a sense for like, okay, yeah, there's some holes here and there that need to be fixed. You can see some things here. So for instance, on this front bumper end, you're going to see, obviously, there's some rust and there's a hole there. We're going to see a lot more. If you look at the front of this hood, uh, John Cashman, a lot of times, I got a chance to see him just uh, this week. Uh, a lot of times he would, uh, I've seen him do these reviews on these cars. And when the hood is open, you uh, when this is all the way hinged forward, you kind of put your hand and you kind of just tap lightly on the inside of the lower hood. And if you hear a lot of rust, like showering down, which I would assume here, you know, based upon what we're seeing, it's kind of an indicator of, you know, some, some, some rust underneath there. Now there's no secret. When you look at this car, there's, there's definitely some things going on the rear bumper. You know, this is a bumper that to me with the 65 review I did, you could almost leave the bumpers that way. And it kind of fits into the overall look and feel with this one. You know, you look at it, it's got this big missing piece here and you kind of go, well, these bumpers are going to have to be redone. You know, that's, that's depending on who does it. I mean, that's thousands of dollars right there. Um, I use advanced plating in Tennessee. They did my rear bumper, very fair price, best in the business, but you know, it takes time and money. You can see the original paint peeking through here. Certainly quote unquote respray on this car was obviously, you know, not a full kind of remove all the bumpers and all that stuff, which you would probably expect from a lot of places. We could see a little bit of crustiness in here. We also see that turquoise mist poking through in terms of the color. And again, I don't want to get too caught up with, you know, going through a super in-depth review, but you can see a few things hanging here that shouldn't be there. You know, all of that stuff should be tucked up underneath. Again, not the end of the world, you know, little things that can be fixed. Now, keep in mind, as I'm saying all this, there are opportunities, you know, in getting a car, like I said, with the 65, uh, that you can sometimes get a little bit more, um, you know, bang for your buck, maybe. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a lower budget than being able to buy a full blown done car, then certainly this gives you that opportunity. You could also argue and say, well, hey, for all the little imperfections that you're calling out, you know, there are a lot of nice things. Like if you look at this grill, the grill from this angle looks good, you know. Uh, some of these little pieces in here don't look perfect, but a lot of times you can clean this kind of stuff up. However, when you start looking at this and you see some of these guys here, uh, these dents and dings and some of it, and then this pot metal with all the pitting and things like that. You have to decide up front, do you want to live with that or are you going to get that stuff redone? Uh, not every place wants to redo pot metal. Certainly, uh, advanced plating does. Uh, they've got a great process on it. But um, here you can see the Continental badging, as I've talked about in my 61 in-depth video of the exteriors of these cars that's available on the channel. Uh, the earlier models had a longer tail, and this is I guess, arguably kind of one of the reasons, um, you know, people had complained about uh, wiping the cars down and things like that and, and it breaking some of these pieces. But uh, certainly you can see that is broken. These get pretty costly. I think there are reproductions uh, that are that are available. But again, you, you, you start adding to the list. There's the front of the hood again. And I don't want to go through every photo. You know, I'm trying to keep these a little bit more efficient. Uh, better, better said than done. Uh, you got the 61 antenna. Of course, it's on the back. This little piece here, if I remember correctly, is pot metal where this is stainless. And that plays into factor because a lot of times these cars will rot away and the stainless looks great. The pot metal, not so uh, nice in some of those spots. You can see in here, they're kind of being as detailed as they can, kind of showing you some of the crustiness. More than likely, a car like this that I don't want to say has been neglected. It's had a rough life, if you will. 
uh, rough existence rather, uh, not necessarily a life. But um, you know, you, you you're going to say, okay, well, if it's got all this stuff going on, you know, more than likely it's going to need all new seals eventually. And if you go on Steel Rubber, who I recommend, and you type in, you know, you enter in sixty one Lincoln, the stuff isn't cheap. But certainly that's kind of maybe the last thing that you'd be worried about if you were looking to get this car. Uh, you could see here, this is with the hood open. This is some of the stuff I talked about. I mean, this is borderline, like, could it be fixed? It's going to take a body shop to really tell you. Uh, then you're going to get into maybe you need a hood for the car if it's if it's too far gone. And we'll round this out with a few more things here. Obviously, we looked. You could see a little bit of the dinginess going on here. You know, certainly on the kind of lower scale, if we were looking at the Haggerty uh, price guide, which, again, I did not take a screenshot this go-round. Um, there are some good things, again, you know, when you start looking at the lights and some of the door pins and some of that stuff working, uh, that's a good sign, right, for the most part. I think the biggest benefit of this car is it is running and driving from what we can see. It, it is an AC car. I often talk about, you know, those are some pluses. Uh, you know, this thing can certainly be blown apart. But this is the kind of car, even with it running and driving, you know, my friend TC will often say, they often need something. A lot of times they need everything, you know, and you just look at some of this stuff and, you know, you kind of go, man, you know, if I want to put this back to factory, you know, this isn't the right air conditioning compressor, you know, this isn't maybe how the lines looked and stuff. And you, you immediately get into like this car to restore, it could be 30, 40, 50,000 plus dollars. And then would it even be worth that much? And that's why I want to reinforce Oftentimes, I don't know what we have. Actually, I think I do know what we have here. Probably a car cover that got pulled off and a little piece that was ripped and is just hiding out there. But that's why we get to a point where people end up resto modding these cars. You know, they'll buy a car like this maybe for seven grand or less. Uh, in the years past, a lot less than that. Uh, they'll airbag them, they'll throw some shiny wheels on it. And then they'll sell it for like a profit, you know, and, and make big dollars on it. But, you know, when you start looking underneath here, there's some wackiness going on with some of the floor supports and whatnot. Um, of course, you've got a manual, you've got the original owner's manual, and you've got a few things there. But I'd like to hear from you, like, what are your thoughts on this? Where do you think the car is going to go? I think in this market, even though I think back in the day, this would have been a tops $3,500 almost bordering parts car to a certain extent in a certain era, uh, I would say, you know, seven to 10,000. Again, I've known people that have bought super nice 65 white sedan, untouched, all original for nine grand, right? Uh, just several years ago. And you go, wow, like you would put 30, 30, 40 grand in this car to get it to where my friend bought a 65 for 9,000, right? So I'm just trying to get people to think about that. Again, this may be an opportunity. Maybe you say, hey, look, I really want one of these cars. I want to learn these cars. I want to learn about them. I want to wrench on them some. I'm going to spend five, six, seven grand, maybe a little bit more, and I'm going to get in on this. Okay, cool. You could make this car work, certainly. I don't want to see it go to the well Lincoln Graveyard. But you have to think ahead on some of this because you can easily start racking up the dollars in a restoration or a light resto mod. Stay on the rise, everyone. Thank you for the support. We're out of here.